All right. The uh, so Brianna, you and I were connecting and uh, texting back and forth, emailing, and uh, really excited about the conversation because I had asked you uh, what your philosophy was on uh, on setting goals for the new year because we're looking at the new year and uh, and you started to respond. I said, no, wait, no, let's let's have this conversation live. Um, cause I'm always curious to see what, uh, what people's goals are like. If, if anybody listened to the podcast, Ted McElroy and I did a couple of weeks ago on, um, on goals, I laid out all my failures for 2023 and, uh, I don't want to have that happen again. I think I've got a good strategy, but I'm always ears for, you know, things people have done and systems people have implemented to, to be successful. So I'm excited to hear yours. Yeah. And I'm, um, excited to kind of get your thoughts too and um, how we can really look back at 2023 reflect because this is always like a new time to do it but I think if we do it earlier than December and heading into January obviously it's always a good reset um, with the calendar year so we all get into that but really how you stay motivated for the rest of 2023 and then into 2024 so happy to be here. Nice. So what you're saying is your philosophy is not um, January 1st when you're in the uh, the post bubbly haze, waking up going, shoot, I've uh, I need to find my sticky notes and write down some goals and maybe build a uh, that vision poster for the next year. That's that's not the time to do it. No, that's like my vision boards, like right over there. Ooh, you see it? I, I do. and all the, the the color coordinated sticky notes. I I am not showing you the rest of my office and all the stuff I've got because. You will put me to shame now. No, my office, there's like one part too, I think too. Just visualization is a huge piece of this that we don't give advantage to. And Uh so we'll get into it a little bit later, but just just some books that I found really, really valuable um, that have changed my game and how I'm leading too. Yeah, well, let's talk about it. But before we do that, real quick, um, uh, I'm sure everybody listening knows who uh, who you are and and the impact you've had on, uh, on the industry, which is really cool. But for those who don't, 30 second, hey, I'm Brianna. Quick intro. Yeah, I'm Brianna Rue. I practice in South Florida. So I just actually purchased my partner out. It was a seven year buy in, buy out. So July, cool. 2023. That was one of my um, Congrats. cool moments. Yeah. And then a co-founder of Dr. Contact Lens, we're really building a, a national brand really fast on honestly, no budget um, has been interesting, kind of stepping out of the exam chair and still in it because I know how hard it is. I think we get into the success theater mentality a lot through LinkedIn and Facebook and Mm -hmm. all the speakers out there that it's easy to forget just how hard it is to run a practice. Uh, So I still am in that and um, really has become our incubator for Dr. Contact Lens. And then enjoy myopia management, scleral lenses. And I'm also a wife and a mother of two. And um, yeah, just all the things, you know, you you gotta have great people around you. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you brought up that success theater. I've never heard of that term, I love it. But I, I, (laughs) right, we we curate just such an interesting persona that we put out into the world that I think most of the time isn't, doesn't show the full picture. It's real life, but doesn't show the full picture. So, and uh, so mom of two, how old are your little ones? Seven and just turned two. Oh, cool. Yeah. They still love you. They okay. do. Yeah. They do. I'm, I'm soaking it up. Like definitely. I've, I've got teenagers and I ruin their life on a daily basis, but they tell me that. So that's, <laughs> I told my wife, I said, as long as they're telling us that they don't like us right now, that means they love us. It's when they yeah. stop talking completely that I get worried. It all comes back. Yeah. So, well, it's fun. My oldest is 20 and uh, he's actually making me a, a grandpa in March. So I'm really excited to, uh, to to now have this crazy kid that was a teenager, you know, be an adult and, and be professional. And it's it's super cool to interact with him at that level and uh, and just see his growth and start learning things from him. And then I'm really excited to be a grandpa, though I need to come up with a different name. Too young to be called grandpa. Yeah, exactly. Age yeah. is just a number. It is. Awesome. <laughs> well, super happy you're here. So I, I let's start with the, the goals. You said start in December, which blew away everything that I had in mind because, you know, January 2nd or 1st in that uh, champagne haze is where I've always started. So how do you start now for, for next year? Um, I do 
So I think a big thing that we underutilize a lot, and I learned this through building a tech company, is really a whiteboard. So Mm -hmm. in my office, I have a whiteboard and I'm able to kind of draw out what we're working on, what's in progress, because I think that you can, um, I can't remember who said it, but it's like just saying the Huffington Post lady, Ariana um, Mm -hmm. Huffington, she was like, we all put all these things on our to-do list. And if you just give credit that you're never going to get to it, taking it off of your to-do list is so empowering, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that I've heard this too, where we go from human beings to human doings, Mm. and that's not really effective. And we have to get back to where you
helping others help you in that goal, but also help them uh, spread their wings too. Yeah. Right. So, cause it's bringing her on, I'm sure is helping, you know, personally her yeah. uh, get what she needs and, and helping you. No. So I'm curious. So those listening say executive assistant, you know, I can't afford it. What am I going to do? How much time, right? They just did the math in their head and said, well, shoot, this is, you know, must be nice. Um, <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Which they all said when <laughs> I was say, like, right? recommend that just read the book. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. one piece in it, Aaron, where he talks about your value of time. So let's mm -hmm. say you as a doctor, you say that you want to make $100 an hour. So mm -hmm. if you're answering an email and you could pay somebody $20 an hour to be your executive assistant, you cost yourself $80. Yeah. You cannot afford not to have yeah. an executive assistant. And I think that also comes back on how I look at cost versus investments, mm -hmm. tweaking the words, or it's like, what is this costing you? That's like a lean back, like shrinking word. And when you say investment, that's a growth mindset, expansion, abundance place to come from. I like that. So, so does that, I'm sensing that that fits into one of your, your personal values, right? Investing in, in yourself and your time and your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Personal freedom is one of my Ooh. core values. Personal freedom. And not just to sit on the beach and drink with a, uh, you know, sip something with a little umbrella in the drink, although I'm sure that's fun. That's part of it. Freedom to do what, <laughs> freedom to do what you want to do. Freedom to enjoy life, right? Yeah. And not apologize for it. Oh, very cool. So I like that. So you break it down and you've got all this written on your whiteboard. So I'm just picturing your office with your gorgeous color corded sticky notes there. And, uh, most people listen to this, but it'll be up on, uh, on, on YouTube. So if you want to see, uh, a, you know, an office to be jealous of, um, you know, jump on and watch the first few minutes, <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, so you've got your, your whiteboard and it's just, it's clearly written up there, you know, what your goals yeah. are, what you're doing each quarter. So mm -hmm. put it up, takes it out of your brain Yeah, and you don't have to hold on to it. Yeah. I, I like it. So when you take something off your list, cause I like what you said there too, is, is getting things you know, off your to-do list. Do you erase them or do you cross them out? I do like a little check mark because then you can okay. do an audit of all the little wins that you've had. So mm -hmm. when you're looking back, kind of what you said in the beginning is like 2023 was like, ugh, what did I do? Right. Yeah. But if you can sit there and, and give yourself like an hour or two to really reflect on it, just as like a gratitude loop, mm -hmm. um, then you really are accelerate accelerating yourself and yeah. not um living in what didn't happen right living in what did Ooh, mm -hmm. that's a good one that should be a shirt or a bumper sticker right there don't live go. in what didn't happen live in what did um there you go I, I, now i, I think like we're that. writing a book over here Aaron. I, we are together so. <laughs> yeah yeah although i uh my english teacher in college promised to pass me if i didn't take any more english classes so you'll have to do the writing yeah. I never thought I was going to be a writer. English was like my other thing too. Like I really? had to take like another writing course and my mom started every single college paper that I had. I had like writer's block and I was like, mom, I need a paper that does da, da, da. like wish chat GPT exists. So your mom then. was the original chat GPT. She was. the. Yeah. <laughs> she is the OG chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. Um, cool. So, so we've got the, the goals, the check marks. And, and I do like that. The, there's been a couple books that that have made me think of it. The one most recently was um, All It Takes is a Goal, uh, John Acuff's, where he talks about easy goals and little wins. You know, just take that big audacious goal, what you want to do and break it down into little pieces. And, and that way you can, you can win those. And if you don't hit that little goal, that's fine because you still have a bunch more wins uh, playing in there. I also like the book uh, Slide Edge that just talked about the power of compound interest. So, you know, 1% today, 1% tomorrow, you know, it just builds on itself. And when you can look back, it, you yeah. see the growth. Um, but I think to your point, we don't do a good job of seeing the growth. We just see the misses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's another great book. Um, I know people are like, what are you guys reading all these books? Right. So there's a hack on YouTube um, where you can just type in the book and it's called, I'm going to blank on it. Um, but the guy visualizes the whole book in like under oh. 10 minutes. Okay. Um, and he does a lot of these business books. So he will, um, you can break it down and then go back in. Obviously reading the book, you get more things from mm -hmm. listening it. Like I listen to it cause I have a 20 minute drive in the morning. So even five, 10 minutes, like, you know, I got to get myself pumped up sometimes for like music and things. So it's yep. not always business on that drive. But 10, 15 minutes a day really does add up to substantial 
listening and learning and reading. And so one I just finished was 10X is easier than 2X yep. and talking about the gap and the gain, right? So that's yep. another great book, but that's where a lot of us like to live. And especially now with what we're doing online and seeing again, that success theater, it's really easy to, to get in that gap and get down on yourself where you really should think more highly of what you've accomplished. And sometimes yeah. that's just, you know, finding a cheerleader in your life where it's like, no, like we're all, you know, we are doing great. Like yeah. things are happening. Yep. Uh, we're, we're afraid of success. Um, I'll have to check out that YouTube, uh, hack I've, I download, there's an app, uh, Blinkist and, yeah. uh, that summarizes the books too. So I'll listen to that before. So I, I don't read books well. I listen to them. So audio books, but I'll listen to the summary of the book on Blinkist. Then I'll listen to the book and then I'll go back and listen to the summary again on Blinkist just to make sure I pull out the, the pieces that matter to me. Yeah, it definitely is a good channel. I'll have to let you know what channel it is. Um, yeah. So it's called it's the Productivity Game. Productivity YouTube channel. Game. Yeah, we will uh, link that in the notes as well because um, I'm stealing it. <laughs> yeah. Game on YouTube. I'm writing notes here. Yeah. Awesome. So take us to the, 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 cause I want to go back to your quarters. Cause I love this, you know, for your office and, and probably works really well for our lives too. Uh, and, you know, this quarter, I'm going to focus on, on this goal. Uh, and so you said quarter one dry eye. Mm -hmm. Do you break that then into, into to smaller goals or smaller step pieces? How does, how does that look? Yeah. I think what we struggle with in, a lot of our offices is implementation and what it takes to implement something new. So there are processes to implementation. And when you look at your team, if you just say like, this is what we're doing, go, that's where a lot of failures come from. So because we do like our toys in our office and that investment, right? Yeah. You yeah. got to pay for these things or else mm -hmm. they just sit there and collect dust. And then you're mad that you bought it and it's everybody else's fault, but your own. So I think ownership, <laughs> Ownership is a big piece of this. Uh -huh. um, so like what we'll look at is, you know, what is it going, like we did with the myopia program. We right. built our whole myopia thing out from soft multifocals, dual focus lenses to ortho K to atropine to how we were charging. We got forms made. Um, and so you can source people to help you with these things. This is not all like if you're, you don't have a marketing firm. Um, there's even like Caitlin, um, is an OD that will help you create forms and, um, you can help her, you know, build out her process. So I think we're kind of timid to enlist other resources, um, within our own practices. Cause we may not be great at design and we want all these pretty things. So you got to find somebody to help you do it. So figuring out where you can source different different things. Um, so then the dry eye thing, what equipment are we going to need? I need to redo one of the rooms to make it more spa-like and inviting, right? But it's mm -hmm. also, um, are we going to buy a new chair, yeah. right? Like, what do we want that to be? So that's what we're going to kind of come up with in January. February is when most of the equipment we will, we will be delivered and we'll have um, a day where we're inviting patients. And then we'll go back into March and just keep expanding on what's going well, what's not. And then that's how we'll set up the success there. So just how we've done it for myopia, how we did it for scleral lenses um, is what we're going to do for this. Cool. So I like that. And then, um, so I, I, you also mentioned, and I think it's important to note that you've been talking about doing this for a year. So the idea is not, Hey, we want to do dry eye. We're going to just talk about it in, in, you know, Q1, you've been wanting to do it. It's been in the plan. I'm sure everybody's thinking about kind of how it's going to get set up, what we need, but then the yeah. hyper focus is in the implementation of doing, doing is going to be Q1. Exactly. Right. So nice. So you mentioned, um, Caitlin that helps with, with design. Who's that? Um, I have to find Caitlin, Caitlin Rigotti, R E G H E T T I. She's cool. an OD. Um, she also is like really good at
patients calling for. Like I even have um, a sales call little sheet next to it. it was like, if it is a sales call, who was it? What do they want? Would they buy us lunch or even like a $50 gift card to something to hear their pitch, right? Mm -hmm. And you instantly was like, no, I'm busy. How are you yeah. going to expand anything that way? Yep. Um, so I think that that is how you can get your team involved moving into the new year too, is what do we want to bring in? What processes are broken? What methodology can we improve on? Yep. And and start there. Like that goes a long way and your team will feel part of something versus instantly having seven gatekeepers. Yeah. That's not effective anymore. No, no, it's, it, it's not in... Uh... Two thoughts came to mind. One, I don't know if you uh, know Spencer Jones. Um, he's had a, a long career with, with Essilor, still with Essilor. Um, it became a good friend of mine and uh, I had a conversation with him probably a year ago now. But I said, hey, as a, as a non-industry person or non-doctor working in the industry as a rep, like, what, what are you not getting from us? Like, help me, tell me what you're afraid to tell me when you walk in the office. And he said, the hardest thing is, most of, most of you won't tell me what you need because I've seen it all. I've, I've heard it all. And if I don't have the answers, I know how to get it. But when you say everything's going great or like, you're not sure what direction you are, I can't help you. Like, I just, I have to have a generic conversation back with you. But if you're clear on, this is who I want to be, this is my goals. This is what I'm struggling with. I can now fine tune and hyper-focus on that for you. Because if I have it great, if I don't, I know who does. And it's a small yeah. industry. We all know each other. So just. Oh, boy, is it oh, small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the better you know yourself and what you're trying to do, the better I can help you. And then this interaction doesn't feel awkward and forced. Yeah. Like I look forward to it as a, as a rep. You look forward to it. I enjoy helping people just like you enjoy helping patients. So I'm going to invest more into you when I get to do what I want to do, yeah. um, which I thought was incredibly enlightening. And I, that's a vulnerability piece, mm -hmm. right? Like we use that word being vulnerable a little bit too much now, but that's exactly what that is, right? Is just being true to yourself, being honest, and you don't have to have all the answers. That's nobody said that you did. Uh, another great book comes to mind, which is Bart Foster's Business Outside book, where he talks about the bell curve on where we hope most of our conversations are like, hi, Aaron, how are you? How are the kids? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Just super basic. No one's getting anything out of that conversation and how you get into like the outskirts of the bell curve. And you can do that with your, with your reps. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, cause they know who's doing great. They know who's doing bad. Like they, they do genuinely have a lot of solutions. Yeah. Um, and if you can lead with, um, we're really bad now at taking advice. And yeah. so another thing that Bart helps you do is like a shared experience. So mm -hmm. in this thing, like if you're having an issue with one of your teenagers, right? Call one of your friends and, hey, can, do you have a shared experience where you had this, where it's not just like, hey, do this, do this, do this, do this? Because we yeah. do that a lot yeah. um, in our industry is like, well, why aren't you doing this? Or why aren't you doing that? And so I think coming from those shared experiences of um, is more compassionate yes. and more honest. In the past, our focus revolved around prescribing MacuHealth or MacuHealth Plus to patients at risk of macular degeneration, while also recommending it to collegiate and professional athletes for enhanced contrast sensitivity and sports performance. However, this year's introduction of the Life Meter has been a game changer. The Life Meter revealed a concerning truth. Many of my patients have alarmingly low skin carotenoid levels, indicating potential deficiencies in essential body tissues like the retina and brain. Supported by over 30 peer-reviewed publications, LifeMeter's accuracy, consistency, and effectiveness has been demonstrated across 2,000 subjects with diverse backgrounds. With this newfound insight, I can now have meaningful conversations about carotenoid levels with all of my patients, even those who may seem outwardly healthy. To learn more about this empowering technology, feel free to contact your MacuHealth representative or click on the link in the show notes. Together, let's optimize patient care and elevate their well-being. No, I, I couldn't agree more, which is why I'm, I'm a huge advocate of community, but, but in-person, real face-to-face -face community, and uh, which is why we've been part of Vision Source and, 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 uh, and continue to be. Um, and I think it's great, but I think there's, there's lots of communities people can, can engage in. But being able to be, to say, hey, I need help. And, 
and knowing that you're not going to be negatively judged. Quite frankly, the first person in the room that says it, everybody else in the room, you know, breathes a sigh of relief and says, yep, me too. And, uh, <laughs> and the answer is usually within that group because shared experiences, here's what I had. And sometimes it's, I just need to vent. Sometimes we need somebody looking at it from a different angle going, Hey, you just you keep running into the, you know, you're trying to op- pull the door open when you just got to push it. Right. It's something real simple as that. But, uh, but I think community is important. Um, and I found, I'm curious for you that we saw a lot of success when we started that with our own team as well. Mm-hmm. So it used to be that I went out, uh, my business partner, Brittany McMurrin, we'd go out, we'd evaluate equipment. We'd come back and we'd have to sell it to the team. Hey, we're yeah. going to bring this in. Like we'd sell it. And last year at our annual planning meeting, we closed for a, a whole day, twice a year, once in January, once in the summer and go off site. And we had uh, Mackie health come in and they brought in their life meter. And I was just really curious to see what the pushback was going to be. I expected the team to say, no, we don't need anything else. This is crazy. Right. They had them read it. My team looked at me and said, when are we getting it? I said, I'm sorry, what? We're about ready to do a remodel. And they said, no, we need this. I said, okay, well, we're done with the remodel. We'll look. And they go, well, how about right now? And, uh, because they wanted it, they love it. They run it. They do it on everybody. Uh, our, our financially, our Mackie Health sales have you know doubled overnight and have continued to to grow from there. But it's because they bought in. I had to sell nothing, mm-hmm. uh, which was a lot easier and being vulnerable to them, saying, "Hey, we're thinking about it. Not quite sure. You know, I want your feedback," which yeah. got us honest feedback and made it a lot more successful than other products that I brought in that had a lot of value, but still feel like I'm selling on a on a monthly basis to get them to engage. Yeah. And that's part two, I think, of a practice value. So in Bart's book, he has, there's 50 words at the back of the book and your 50 become 10, your 10 become five, your five become three, mm-hmm. and your three become um, your core values. And mm-hmm. so when you're honoring, we did, my, we did this with my whole team. And when you do it, make sure that you let your team go first when they tell you what their values are, because they will mirror you, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's always important where they talk more than you, I think Mm -hmm. in meetings and the values thing, really, we put it back on our, we have another whiteboard in our kitchen. And so we put all everybody's value statements above the whiteboard. And so when you see these little kind of petty fights happen in an office, which are, you know, we all, we were there more with with our, than we are with our family. Like it's going to happen. Um, And so when you're hiring to those values to the team, um, and then you can come up with your office values. It's really powerful um, what you can accomplish because you're not oh. out on this island. No. And I like that, that it, it starts 50 and works your way down because I've seen lots of activities and say, hey, what are your values? And everybody looks at each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. And you start, people start stealing stuff from Disney or, you know, and like, that's not you. Right. <laughs> You are the exactly. least magical person I've ever met. Like there is no pixie <laughs> dust in your life. What are you coming up with? Um, so I, <laughs> but uh, it's a but good marriage. It it's a good marriage thing to do too, Aaron. Um, I did it with my husband because we were like, we're in that yeah. messy middle where we're like, our careers are both flourishing. We got two young kids. We're just both exhausted. It's like, ugh. Um, yeah. And so just realizing that entrepreneur, extrovert, introvert, like what, what he uh-huh. values like it actually was really beneficial too in a lot of relationships oh nice that's super cool yeah i'll mm-hmm. have to well, we'll try it with the office first i've learned to uh to practice there and then refine and then bring it home. Home. <laughs> and then we finally come home <laughs> although it would be a lot of fun with my teenagers right it would yeah uh, yeah no uh i don't know if you've seen the what's that disney movie with uh, all the emotions in her head uh uh drawing a blank but the the character disgust is uh is my 17 year old, my 12 year old right now. Everything's uh, uh, dad <laughs> inside out. The name there of the movie. Cute movie. Love the movie. It is a great movie. Yeah. Uh, so cool. And what book was that, that had the, that activity? It's called business outside. Business outside. Okay. Um, yeah. I think refining who you are. Um, and and uh, it's just so helpful when you know the rules of the game, you know, yeah. it, it, playing soccer, you can think it's silly that you can't use your hands, but if you know, you can't use your hands, you just can't use your hands. Right. It's just, it's knowing the rules of the game Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and knowing the rules of communication with your teammates and your coworkers, you know, that's a game too, just in a positive way, understanding how to, how to communicate and how to get what you need and get what they help them get what they need. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's interesting too. Like when they when they go around, you're like, all right, I saw that one, but I didn't see that one, right? Yeah. And so it's some self reflection too on oh, I see now why I can't get anywhere with that. Let me try a different approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I've talked about this uh, in previous episodes when I've just you know reminisced on on my own. The uh, but two things have, have shared a light. One, the more I I got to work and do things with vision source, uh, the less I was seeing patients in practice. And so I'm in a, a day a week or so in clinic care, but the less I was in the office, the faster we grew. Yep. Um, and, and that was a gut punch at first. And then I flipped it and said, well, it's cause I'm such an amazing leader that, uh, that I can, I can lead from afar. And the reality is I got the hell out of my, my team's way and you let did. them be them. And some of the stuff they've come up with is way better than things I would have done. And my my initial reaction was no, don't do that. And I just I learned not to say no and just watch what happens. Yeah. And uh, it it you know the few mistakes that you know may cost me a hundred bucks here or there have netted me tens of thousands in growth and and just happiness of the team. Um, so it's been kind of fun doing that and and then embracing people that were different. My office manager and I are about as polar opposite as you can get. Mm -hmm. And we fought and we fought and we fought and we fought until we learn to appreciate each other. And now it's one of our biggest strengths. Yeah. And we go to each other saying, Hey, I need you to push back on this. You're what am I missing? And, and vice versa. And so our outcomes now become significantly better. We still fight, but it's, it, it it's a very positive and we appreciate the pushback. I love that. Yeah. And I think too, you have to just live in your zone of genius or your, you know, your 20%. And let other people do that. So what you don't like to do, somebody probably loves to do. And what you love to do, somebody else probably doesn't like to do, yep. right? So I think that that's, we don't give ourselves um, as owners time to step by or step away. And I did that when I onboarded um, and a wonderful associate was I didn't have a full five days to give her, but I gave her an admin day where oh. she's next to me, um, help with all these little things, right? So she's become my integrator and it helps her, I think, see the other side of what optometry really is. We can't just be stuck in a dark room all day. That's not fun for anybody, right? No. And you have to give yourself time to flow. We definitely don't do that enough. Like an hour block is not enough time to no. do anything, right? You need at least four hours before you can get into a flow. And so it's just, you know, time chunking. So if you're seeing patients five days a week, could you see patients four days a week, that same amount of patients in four days a week and give yourself that day to, you know, grow the practice. Yeah. And that's when you'll see real success come and you'll feel better. Absolutely. Well, two things that one, having your associate have an admin day is genius. It, it, oh. <laughs> right. The, uh, <laughs> Wow. Right. You can, you look back and you're like, God, if I would have known that four years ago, um, because you, that, that's when they learn, that's when they learn and you get the insights. Some of my favorite times with employees is their first 30 days because they're raw and we haven't jaded yeah. them. They haven't bought in the system. And if they can just give me some of that, that raw feedback on what they're seeing, doesn't mean they're right, but it's, it's good feedback. And if you have somebody with that much influence as a leader in the practice, helping them become a leader and develop it and understand what, how you see the world, um, I think is huge. The other is as an owner, I've seen a lot, and I'm curious if you have too, ultimately become resentful of, of the practice, not too uncommon, just outside when, you know, even sometimes as a parent, you know, if we're being honest with kids where you're like, I, I can't do what I want to do because I got to stay home and babysit. Babysit's yeah. the wrong word. They're my kids. I'm not babysitting, but you get what I'm saying, right? You, I get what you're saying. you know, I, I, I used to race Ironmans until we had our third and it just, time wasn't there. Yeah. And I got frustrated that I, I can't do what I want to do. And, and so I didn't want to feel that animosity and I didn't want to feel that animosity in the practice when I had to stay and do the admin stuff till mm -hmm. eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And it took away from the family. Mm -hmm. So budgeting that time there is, is incredibly important as an owner. Well, I think we're seeing that too in, in the Buy Back Your Time book too, where he talks about you'll get to three parts or three stages in a business. You'll either um, start sabotaging it because mm -hmm. there's you can't add one more thing on your plate. 
you'll want to sell it or you start losing your friends and family, or typically it's all three. And we can get there pretty quickly within an optometric practice because there's so many pieces to this business that nobody sees just yeah. how hard it is. <coughs> and um, it's important to realize that. Yeah. And then what can you delegate? Uh, so delegation, I think, is key on letting people own it. Um, yeah. And they will, like you said, they will pleasantly surprise you oh, yeah. when you give them that trust. Yep, absolutely. And it's great for retention because now you're investing in them and you're moving them from a job to a career and, uh, and, and you know, seeing that they have the opportunities because they probably can't, don't have the skill set all right now to do it, but neither did we half of what we did. Right? Right. We just fade it till we faked it till we made it and, and giving them the opportunity to do the same. Right. That's a, that's and like huge. looking at what we've built with Dr. Contact Lens with my team mm -hmm. internally here, it just you figure it out as you go. And like, I, I don't know everything, but we can, you know, and I don't think just having meetings to have meetings too, we've gotten away from a lot of that cool. um, on just giving them some autonomy. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's hard in patient care. I think it's a little bit different on the business side of stuff, but that is our business, right? Yeah. Uh, is getting patients in and effectively getting them in um, and feeling taken care of. So you got to take care of yourself in order to do that. Oh, absolutely. It's got to, it's got to appease all stakeholders, right? Everybody has to win from it. Um, the, uh, you, you, you've hit on this a, a few times and I want to highlight it because it's something that I'm trying this year and it feels good. But when we sat and looked at what our 2024 is going to look like, in fact, we just did it two days ago. Um, the first thing I had on, and I like Google slides. So the first list on Google slides was, Hey, what are the successes we had from this last year? So I wanted to highlight what we did. The second slide was, what are we going to stop doing? Mm. So what are we going to pull out before I add anything new? I want to get rid of stuff. I need to make room for it. And, uh, haven't done it before. It was kind of fun. It was a little scary because part of that was saying something we tried just wasn't working and, and you can call it a failure. You can say, Hey, that was a, just, a, you know, something that just wasn't quite working. It's not the outcome wasn't what we wanted. Um, but I'm really thinking that when I take that back to the team and we have our annual planning meeting in January and I can show them, Hey, these are all the successes, high fives. We had, you know, best year ever again. Um, and then going forward, here's, here's what I'm taking off of your plates. We're not going to do this anymore. You know, we're going to add a little bit, but I'm taking it off first. So it's, it's that sigh of relief that you're not just overwhelming me. I like that. I like that a lot. So it, uh, cause we try things and not all of them work. Boy, is that true? But you gotta, <laughs> you gotta keep, you gotta keep growing and, yep. and getting out there and, um, yeah. expanding it. And I think too, where I'm seeing, like, obviously we know what kind of happened. There was something big in 2020. Right. A little bit. And um, we've gotten, I think now we got rid of dreaming a little bit during mm -hmm. that three year time span. Now that we know that everything is, you know, we always came out better and more successful and things like that, that we can get back to dreaming. And I'm seeing a lot of us make mm -hmm. these critical mistakes where it's like, this is just good for now or good enough for right now without looking three, five, 10 years. We haven't done that in a long time is getting back to a longer vision as we're talking about goals. Yeah, you have your next year goals, right? But what does this house look like in the next three or five or 10 years? Because oh. we haven't been able to live that no. in the last three years. Yeah. Um, We've been so too I was safe talking, is what you're saying. Yeah, I was talking to my dad. We're in a furniture business. And I was like, oh, you know, the economy and all this stuff. And he's like, Brianna, I ran my business for 35 years like that. And he goes, look, it always will work out. And you can either stay in that and just like keep saying what if, or just don't like put your blinders on sometimes and just go. And that's when I was the most successful was when I just believed in myself mm -hmm. and, and did it. So I think there was something to take away from that too. Um, Cause we'll spend some money or make it a big investment and you get, you kind of hold back and like, don't go all in. And that's not good either. No, that's not. That's interesting. They, we've, we've, we've stopped dreaming. And, yeah. uh, yeah. The, uh, Ooh, that might be the theme to, uh, to my annual planning this year, getting back there to dreaming. Go. Ah, 
God. Yeah. I'm on like my fifth page of notes, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> I can't wait. I keep to looking get down. Ready. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 it's because I'm just jotting down oh, they're just all my all my notes and uh, uh, these, these conversations are so fun. I think selfishly, I get more out of them than anybody else. And uh, <laughs> um, I just I I love learning and I love uh, you know Tom Mai, good friend of mine and. Right. And he said something to me once. He's like, Aaron, we don't steal enough. We just, we need to start stealing more from other people, their ideas and what they're doing and, you know, giving them credit, but just stop bringing, trying to reinvent the wheel. Just the ideas are out there. Just steal them. That's what we kind of did on this call with all the books that I've mentioned, right? A lot of this, you just, you get the idea, you can tweak it, you can make it your own, but you do have to give credit to it um, a lot. Cause I think that's also what we're doing in this environment is, is not giving enough credit for, for the people around us. Um, and that's, you know, you got to give the warm and fuzzies. That's what we're all part of. Like you said in the beginning, it's just a community. Yeah. Um, and this is a really small community. We got to take care of one another, uh, and Big uh, time. build each other up. Absolutely. And, and by the way, one of my goals this year is a book a month. And, uh, I, uh, so I think that you've got me well on my way on, uh, for my reading list. Yeah. Between you and Kyle Cludy, I, I, I don't need any more book recommendations. <laughs> I love them, but I like this. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny you got to kind of score the book when you're when I give it recommendation because um, I have read some doozies, but yeah. you know, like these those were are some really good ones. Yeah, I like it and finding ones that you like and understanding your personality with them. And I mean, Simon Sinek's great. I just I can't relate with him. <laughs> He's a little bit too soft for me, and uh, like I just I need I'm a doer. I need something to do, and I don't want to be in my head. Um, but maybe the whiteboard will help. I don't have a whiteboard in my office. I, you do now. I will now. Yeah. You will now. So, that assistant's going to order you one. Th- that's now on my list to do too. And uh, <laughs> my brain immediately went to people that I uh, went through. I thought of my sister and I said, ah, that probably could backfire. But uh, yeah, yeah, you just honestly, I wrote it down. It was funny. Um, Jen and I, through Dr. Quintek Lens, it's just a lot of visualization. Mm-hmm. So what you can see in your brain, you can make outside in the the universe and oh. we don't realize that enough and so on that when i was looking for an executive assistant when i got that in my head um i did that little exercise and i wrote it down i was like hire an executive assistant and it happened to be that day that shot oh, called wow. me looking for a job and i was like well the universe worked really fast in that case <laughs> um but you got to allow it so had she called me three or four weeks earlier right i think the universe too is a lot about timing uh-huh. and just trusting that and, um, yeah, you have to do and, and set yourself up to get the timing to, on your side. Like when you look at success, things that come to mind are like, oh, they're so lucky this happened to them. Right. When you look at the culmination and it's not that, right. You don't see your feet moving a million miles an hour. Just some of us are more effective with time. We all get the same 24 hours, but like last week, I swear to God was like 492 years long. You know, like, is how I looked at it. I was like, oh my God, it's Wednesday. And I still have Thursday and Friday ahead of me. Um, Like time, I think we give too much credit to time um, on what you can really fit in. But if you use it um, specifically and and really see the value in it, um, like Oprah, she works two hours a day, right? And then she's self-exploring the other whatever, she's not awake. So looking to kind of those philosophies on what Mm -hmm. you can bring in. No, I like that. It's uh, yeah, an assistant is definitely on my list. And, uh, and speaking of time, I have found my little time hack. They make lined sticky notes. Yeah. And so I'll sit down every morning, just write the date on the top of the note. And here's what I'm going to do today. Um, I I've always overestimated what I can do in a day. So I've never checked off the list. And so some of them will roll over and some of them I find just weren't that important and they kind of, they die on their own. But instead of a super long to-do list, if it doesn't fit on that, what, 10 lines, you know, 15 lines on there, um, I can't go beyond it. So it's just my little sticky. I can fold it up, put it in my pocket, put it on my monitor. But yeah, trying to manage time is, is tricky. Yeah. Swallow that frog, Aaron. I taught Swallow my office frog. manage that. Yeah. You know that I, saying, yes? I don't. So let's say I told you, Aaron, it's eight o'clock in the morning and I put a live frog on your desk mm-hmm. and I said, you have until five o'clock today to swallow this frog. So you can do one of two things. You can think about it all day yeah, 
and it comes to 459 and I come back and it's eaten up your whole day that you had to swallow a frog yeah. or you're like gulp. And, and now the rest on. of your day is super easy because you swallowed your frog. So I think too, on these to-do lists is what is going to time suck you mm -hmm. and what is going to, once you get it off and you're like, Oh my God, the rest of this day is so easy. Yeah. I like that. So. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to have to put a frog on the top of my whiteboard. <laughs> you just redesigned my entire office. Like this is, I didn't realize I was getting I do. I also design have call. a little crystal squirrel. Cause then you like, it's Ooh, my squirrel. I like that. So, you know, sometimes you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, I am a little squirrely right now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh -huh. yep. yep. And, uh, so those are fun. So, awesome. Well, Brianna, this has been uh, awesome. I can't wait to to check in and see what your um, uh, how you how you've uh, accomplished your goals and uh, where you're at next year. Um, I would like to be able to uh, to share what mine are when I get them set down and and have an accountability buddy, right? I would love that. you and however many you know thousand people listen to this. And uh, um, uh, sometimes you need that you know fear of checking in with your friends or your friends checking in with you to to just swallow the frog and, uh, and get it done. Um, but I, I don't know if you've heard, uh, I just recently learned through John Acuff that, uh, the second Friday in January is quitters day officially. That's when everybody on Strava stops doing what their, their physical goals, right? They ran for the first two weeks of January. And by the second Friday, they go, Nope, we're done. This was a dumb idea, right? I, I can't go from couch to running 10 miles a day or whatever the case may be. But I guess second Friday is when when the majority of people quit their New Year's resolutions, at least on Strava and health wise. So wow, I'm determined to move past that. I'm not going to quit until at least the third Friday in January now. But, uh, <laughs> you might make it to day 21 and then not quit. I might make that's that's the goal is to that and to do things that that uh, are meaningful and and are, are you know set up appropriately and accordingly. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be January to start too. Like if you get off, you're like, you know, let's, let's start off February 1st. Yeah. Well, I'm inspired to start today. All right. That's there how we go. started See? this, right? You don't wait till January, start figuring out what your, uh, what your goals are today. Yeah. So I like I that. I can't wait to see a picture of your whiteboard hanging in your office next Monday. Oh, you will see it. Yeah. I got to move <laughs> some, I got to move some pictures around and make some space over here. And, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. So do you have like a color coordination strategy? Do you have like different pens and colors that mean things? You just do what you feel no, like? No, I just go. I just go. And like, it's funny how I came to the whiteboard sensation was um, when we had the idea of Dr. Contact Lens, when we found a developer, um, Doug, he came into my office and I like pull out my notebook and I'm like, all right, Doug, I'm like super ready to code. And he's like, I'm sorry, where is your whiteboard? And again, being the daughter of a furniture builder, I have a drill handy and know how to use it. And so I was like, I'll be right back. Ran up to Target, grabbed a whiteboard. I came back and I was like, bzz, bzz. all right, now we're ready to go, right? So like within 30 minutes, we were ready to go. And like Dr. Contact Lens was built on a whiteboard like this big, you know? Nice. So you just have to, you just got to do it. And yeah. you'll see the ideas start to flow when you do it. Um, but you got to give yourself time to do it as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, get a whiteboard is on my to-do list this weekend. It will be up in the office right over there on Monday morning with a picture of a frog. If I can find a cool sticker of a frog, I'll throw that up there because my artistic ability is lacking. There you go. Ah, ah, this has been fun. I appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate so, it too. Cool. So look forward to, uh, to checking in, uh, next year and uh in, in holding ourselves and reporting back our uh the successes we've had and in, in sharing the uh the ups the downs the learnings and uh and celebrating the successes um i've got a whole list of books so i will uh try to put them into uh, the show notes you did say you have a, a book list um and so yeah i can uh, share that yep share that and uh and we'll put in where people want to if they want to uh, to, to, to reach out to you, learn more about Dr. Contact Lens, um, and just, you know, have a conversation and be inspired like we all are today. And, yeah. uh, so very cool. Well, happy holidays to you and your entire family. Enjoy the little ones while they still love you. <laughs> I 
will, I will. And yours will come back, I promise. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, they're, they're fun. I enjoy, I enjoy every stage. It's, you know, even getting told you're ruining their life is kind of a fun experience. That's part of it, man. It's just yeah. another chapter in your book. Yeah. Although it's really funny because my high school fashion is now what they're wearing. And, Isn't this uh, terrible? <laughs> it's, uh, well, for a guy's, our, I mean, my fashion never changed. Like, I, I same jeans and checkered vans and t shirt, and I'm fine, right? It's what I've been wearing forever. Uh, the, my daughter's fashion is insane. And uh, I, I've learned not to comment on fashion, but uh, but I do get I find it funny when they laugh and like, Dad, you can't wear that. I'm like, I've been wearing this since I was ten years old. <laughs> You're copying me. Look, my yearbook looks exactly like all of your friends, just in a lower resolution picture. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to those conversations. Ah, oh, they're they're fun. I wish I would have saved all this stuff because it would have been a lot cheaper than going out and you know. I don't remember vans being 150 bucks because they weren't. No. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun and, uh, and, and playing with them. It's kind of fun on the music too, you know, reintroducing them to Avril Lavigne and all the punk rock and blink and whatnot. Is that all bad? Uh, in some ways I, I music scared me. I went into a country binge for a long time and like missed pop culture That's funny. and, uh, came back but yeah no they were playing um shaggy and i started singing along and my daughter and her friends all dance and singing young ladies and were mortified that i knew every word to shaggy so, i like um, the party trick aaron i like it a lot yeah yeah I like it so. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well i will let you go thank you again for uh for making time and my pleasure. The conversation yeah and we'll look out for you in 2024 definitely Thank you.